All right, Pasky Pole YouTube channel. We've got PC Replay Baseball. My favorite game. My favorite game to play, and, I, and I'm, I'm pretty vocal about that. I'm going to do a video, my next video, about um, kind of why I love PC Replay Baseball. There's one feature. There's lots of features, but there's one feature I really love. I'm going to do that after this video. And this video right here is a 1991 season replay summary. Now, I did a video not too long ago where I kind of asked questions of the community about what would you do in my situation. So you kind of, if you watch that video, you kind of already know how the season played out, the regular season played out, um, but you didn't know how it ended and you didn't know how the playoffs uh, went either. So we're, we're going to kind of recap the whole season. Um, I forgot to do this a while ago. Um, and really, Glenn Victor, you know Glenn, um, and uh, he's in the Facebook groups and everything. He's been doing a 1991 replay as well using PC Replay Baseball. And it's been fun watching his uh, his um, his results so far and how some similarities happen and some differences. And that's what's cool about this game too is that you have some variety in this game. I mean, it's it's a it's a game where you are. It's it's a game where I play as play lineups. Um, you're rolling digital dice. Um, you know the dice sometimes roll uh, in your favor, sometimes they don't. And of course, I manage the Boston Red Sox, and we'll kind of get to them in a second. So let's kind of go through. The other cool thing with this game is you can recap the season pretty cool. So like right now, I'm going to April 30th. I played the whole season already, okay? But on April 30th, this is what it looked like after the first month of the season. What it looked like in the East, you got the Tigers and the Red Sox uh, up there, uh, first and second AL East. You got the Royals in first place in the West, you know, log jam right there. You've got the Montreal Expos, 11 and 9. Um, Pittsburgh Pirates, 9 11. And the Braves are in top first for the Giants. Okay, as you all know, in real life, it was the Blue Jays and the Twins in the American League. And in the National League, it was the Pirates and the Braves. And, of course, the Braves beat the Pirates, the Twins beat the Blue Jays, and the Twins beat the Braves in the World Series. So we'll see how that plays out. So after April, uh, you'll see uh, Cecil Fielder, eight home runs, Tartable, eight home runs, uh, Fielder hitting 389, um, doing some damage right there. Uh, Jody Reed of the Red Sox having a good, having a good start, hitting 373. National League, you got Matt Williams with nine home runs in the month. Not too shabby. And you've got some low ERA rays from Ken Hill and Charlie Lee Brandt. Uh, Dwight Gooden up there in strikeouts and so forth. So uh, month one done. Let's kind of scroll ahead a little bit. At the end of the month, the end of May, end of May, the Red Sox. My Red Sox, my my managing. And all I'm doing when I'm managing, managing, I'll, I'll, I've said this before. If you watch my streams and my videos, I play as play lineups, but I I run the bullpen. So I run, you know, in terms of who I bring in and so forth. So 25 and 21, AL East uh, is pretty much uh, uh, a tight race. Everyone's in it still, pretty much. The Indians are nine back, not looking too good. The Yankees not looking too good either. Um, the big story here is the Blue Jays are 19 and 29. The Blue Jays 19 and 29, seven back. And at this point, I'm kind of focused on them because that you know realize the Blue Jays are on paper the best team in the division, and they're going to get hot. So I'm looking at them, and I'm not really looking at the Tigers as much. I'm looking at the Blue Jays. I got a seven game lead in the Blue Jays. That's what I'm looking at. Okay, the Twins um, 28 and 20. Uh, they're a pain in the butt to play. Um, I, I played them, obviously, during the season. A very complete team. I guess that's when they won the World Series that year. Uh, a deep team. They put the ball in play. They got a good bullpen. Um, good starters. Uh, they're, they're, they're tough to beat, tough to play. And they're in first place over there. Uh, the Mets and the Phillies tie for first. Pittsburgh is four back under 500. And we'll get to Pittsburgh in a little while, too. They're struggling a little bit. The Braves and the Reds, the Reds defending champions, are tied for first there. In terms of home runs, Tartable and Fielder 
are kind of the class of the American League so far, having big years uh, right there. Clemens leads the uh, league in strikeouts. Uh, Matt Young with seven wins to the Red Sox. A little bit of surprise there. We'll kind of get to that later on as well. In the National League, Howard Johnson and Matt Williams having big years. And Mike Morgan looking well on the mound uh, and so forth there. Let's go to the end of June and see what how it happens here. We scroll, we scroll, we scroll to the end of June. End of June. Red Sox still in first place. A game and a half up on Detroit. Toronto starting to come a little bit now. 37-39. They're 10 games back over under 500. Last month, now they're 2 under 500. They're coming. Four and a half lead. And they're tough. I can see them coming um, and so forth. Um, White Sox have a first place lead in the Twins. Their White Sox, of course, got really good at 92-93. Um, a little year early, they're kind of contending here in the AL West. So Chicago and Minnesota right there. American League, Winfield, Dave Winfield, 22 home runs, has taken the home run lead, doing a great job for the Angels, who are three and a half back, uh, and so forth. You also can see, too, a great disparity between the two divisions. American League East, You've got 40 and 33 lead the division. Okay. That would be the Angels are 40 and 34. They're three and a half back of first place in the West. So you're going to see there's a, there's a strength there at AL West. You have every team over 500 except for the Mariners, only three under 500. In American League East, you can see it's pretty, it's, it's not real pretty. Uh, over in the National League East, the Mets lead by one over Montreal and three over Chicago. Pittsburgh is 500 at five and a half back. At this point, you're thinking that Pittsburgh will right the ship and run away with this division. Um, but as right now, they're not doing so. The Braves in first place and one and a half games back. Matt Williams with 23 home runs, leads all of baseball, having a big year uh, for the Giants, who are now eight back. Let's go to. End of July. And now you've got the Tigers in first place. So the Tigers with a three game lead. The Blue Jays are two under 500, played 500 ball pretty much that month, and they're five backs. So we're still kind of wondering what's going on with the Blue Jays in the American League East at this point. Uh, is there there? And the National and the American League West, the Twins. Uh, Three-game lead over the White Sox, four over the Angels. Look at that surprising Mariners, eight back, um, having a good season, 54 and 48. Uh, once again, American League West is loaded. American League East, not so much. A tight pennant race there. In the National League East, you've got the Mets now in first place still. The three-game lead with the Cubs in Montreal. And the Pirates now under 500, seven and a half, ga seven and a half games back. You're starting to worry with the Pirates right now. The Braves starting to open up their lead to five and a half over the Dodgers. Once again, Matt Williams, 28 home runs, leads all the baseball fielder in the American League with 27. Already 105 runs batted in. It's July 31st, successful fielder, having a big, big year. Um, in terms of earned run average, Mike Moore leads the way there. Uh, wins, Mike Moore leads the way there. Strikeouts is Roger Clemens. Uh, get a little drink. Sorry about that. Let's go to the end of August. What do we see? End of August. The Blue Jays have caught fire. So the Blue Jays were with 200 or 500. So they go 13 over 500 in the month of August. And they have taken a three and a half game lead. The Red Sox now fall below 500. They're six back. And if you know what the Red Sox season, you know that they lost Jeff Gray, one of their best bullpen pieces. He had a stroke in real life and never pitched again. And that's kind of what's going on with the Red Sox at this point in August is just not as many pitching options in terms of the bullpen. And it affects, you know, when you have a really good bullpen guy go away, it kind of affects everything. So the Red Sox now six games back, certainly not out of it. We're not we're not throwing the towel in right now, but the Blue Jays have caught fire, and things aren't looking too good. Uh, the Twins and the White Sox, the White Sox refuse to go away. What a year the White Sox are having! Seventy and fifty-two, hanging in there, 
with the Twins. Uh, Fielder and Tartable, 31 home runs each. Uh, Matt Williams pacing the National League at 33, and all of baseball 33, um, and so forth. So that's what's going on there. Julio Franco in 371 for the Rangers. Pendleton 346 for the Braves. Let's go into September and see what we've got here. September 30th, Blue Jays now a five and a half game lead. As they've kind of opened things up a little bit, the Red Sox now struggling just under 500, 10 and a half games back. Their season's pretty much over at this point. Uh, the Twins um, have kind of opened things up, five and a half game lead. The White Sox have fallen back a little bit. So the Twins looking good there. Uh, Winfield now leads the American League with home runs. All of baseball with 39 home runs. Dave Winfield, a veteran, uh, leading the way for the 91 Angels. And the Angels are having a really good year. 84-73, they'd be right in the pennant race in the American League East. But here they're 10 and a half games back. Uh, Clemens leads in strikeouts. Uh, Mike Moore in the ERA. Uh, Mer- National League East, so the big story here is Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. Cuts back a little bit, five and a half back now. They're still in trouble here, 80 and 77. Um, there was five games to go, so they've pretty much been eliminated right there at this point. So Montreal now the half game lead over the Cubs, a five game lead over the Mets, the Braves a ten game lead over the Dodgers. They've kind of clinched things up there right too. So basically, we're we're at the point where um, there's six games to go in that range, um, and so pretty much the Blue Jays have wrapped that up. Um, the Twins have pretty much wrapped it up, too. Uh, Braves have definitely wrapped it up. And, of course, Montreal and Chicago are tight, and um, the Mets have been eliminated for the most part, and so has Pittsburgh uh, for the most part as well. So Pittsburgh um, had a great – we'll get them in a little bit, too, kind of what, what went wrong with them in a second. So what happened um, – I made a video – On Sunday, October 6th, okay, so um, what happened here, Chicago and Montreal um, have a half game difference as the season ended, okay, and the reason for that is they did not play the full 162 games because in real life, they weren't in contention. In real life, the Pittsburgh Pirates ran away with things, and so I made a YouTube video uh, when this happened, about what should I do? Should I just let it leave like that? Have the Cubs win it? And just say we're playing as play lineups um, and so forth and that way. Um, I ended up adding games, okay? Because I said, you know, in real life, what they would do is they would play those games um, and do so. Um, after I did so, I kind of felt, like that was the wrong decision because if I'm playing as played lineups, I should play the as played schedule. And if they don't play 162, they don't play 162, and the Cubs should be the National League East champions. Um, but I went ahead and did it. I did it, and then afterwards, kind of regretted it. And so I, I don't, I don't know what the right answer is. I mean, at the end of the day, it's the right answer is how you want to play, right? I mean, it's, it's what you want to play. So I played the games out. So let's go to October seventh. Um, the first one, um, the Cubs play the Mets. Okay. So that's one of the games must've got rained out over the year and the Mets win uh three to one. Okay. And so that makes, um, Montreal and the Cubs tied for first. We go to this one here and the Cubs and Montreal now play. Now the Cubs and Montreal had a game that was rained out. So the Cubs and Montreal play, it's basically a playoff game. It's basically a one-game playoff game, and the Cubs get the win 7-6. to six. So the only good thing is, is the Cubs win the division, and they would have won it if I had not played the games. Anyway, so either way, the, the, the same result happened. I would have felt worse, I think, if the, if the Cubs didn't win. Because I really feel like, unless you're playing a what-if scenario, if you're playing what-if, you're not playing as-played lineups, then I think you should play the games. I think if you're playing as-played lineups, you play as-played schedule. So I kind of I kind of didn't have consistency there, but the Cubs win, and that's what's important in terms of that. So it's the Cubs and the Braves and the National League, and the Blue Jays and the Twins in the American League. So the American League ALCS is what we had in real life, um, and so forth. 
let's look at the the leaders here. Winfield gets 39 home runs um, to lead the American League in that. And um, Mike Moore does that as well. So if you want to kind of look at uh, highlights for the season, um, cycle, we had four guys hit for the cycle. Uh, hitting streaks, uh, Brian Harper with 26 doing that. Three home run games, had a bunch of guys with three home run games. Bell, Brooke, Winfield, Shane Mack, Jeff Blauser, Mosby. Winfield did it twice. Winfield did it twice. Um, five hit games, had a bunch of guys do five hit games as well. You can see that. No four home run games and so forth. Pitching, no hit games. We had three no hitters. Three no hitters the 91 season. Tommy Green against the Giants, Mike Moore against the Mariners, and Charlie Huff against the Tigers. So three no hitters in that game. Um, 12 strikeout games. There's the list. Clemens 15. Clemens said it again with 12. So Clemens said it twice. Clemens said it three times. Clemens had a great year. Four plus 10 strikeout games. Clemens had nine 10 strikeout games. Ryan seven. And that stuff. Um, triple plays for fielding. Let's see. We had one on there. Gladden, the Knobloch, the Herbeck. 15 plus innings. We had a 17 inning game and a 16 inning game. Baltimore in there. Oakland's in there a lot too. And so forth on that end. Um, In terms of standing, so I brought this up before. Blues A's ninety one and seventy one in real life, ninety two and seventy in our in our um, in our replay. Red Sox eighty four and seventy eight in real life, eighty two and eighty. And that one, Twins ninety seven sixty five real in uh, in our one, ninety five sixty seven in real life. Um, so all pretty good. Uh, the big difference here, the Cubs were under 500 in real life and won 10 more games. Uh, Montreal won 15 more games because they played more games or two. The Mets won eight more games. And, of course, the team that kind of got – how they got those wins was the Pittsburgh Pirates won 15 less games um, doing so. And so – Here's the thing, and I know this, you know, people will look at this and say the, the game, you know, whatever, it's not realistic. You know, Glenn Victor, you look at his results now, Pittsburgh is in first place. I think they have a pretty good lead, like a five-game lead, and they're playing like normal. And our, and our thing right here, the Pittsburgh Pirates, their run differential was equal to have a, a record of 91 and 71, okay? They were extremely unlucky. They were eight games unlucky. I mean, in terms of if you kind of look at the, how that that works, usually it evens out. They're extremely unlucky. They still underachieved a little bit because 91 71 is seven games worse than what they had. But they didn't play well in close games. They were 20 and 30 in one run games. Um, and that's kind of the big thing there, too. So, I mean, I think it's pretty cool to have different teams and so forth doing that. Uh, Braves 101 in our replay, 94 in real life. And they kind of walked away with that um, pretty good. In terms of the replay roundup, I want to show this to you later on in terms of uh, – Let 
No, I can't do that. All right, scratch that. Um, I want to see the, the, the one thing, we go to the leaders here real quick. I want to find Do this one more time. That's all I got for this time. I kind of have a brain cramp here. Um, that's June second. Here we go. All right. I'm trying to do guys. I'm sorry for for doing this right here. So um player of the week, game of the week, team of the week. I'm trying to see the the, the awards. If it show like I know how to get the awards, so um, So it usually kind of gives you who won the awards. And I'll show you how I find them all the time, too. There's another way, too, that shows you the, the awards and and, uh, and who won or what. And I can't seem to find it. There we go. Awards. All right, there we go. My bad. So <laughs> that's what I was looking forward to. I'll, I'll show you that way later. So American League, and I'm sorry for the the all the silence there. Um, American League MVP goes to Kirby Puckett. Roger Clemens gets the Cy Young Award. In the American League. Um, National League Terry Pendleton and Tom Glavin are the award winners. On that stuff too, too, and those are your winners, pennant winners, Blue Jays, Twins, Cubs, and Braves. So let's now get out of that and go to the playoffs. So in the playoffs, um, Cubs and Braves and NLCS. Cubs win 10-9 in game one. Twins win 5-2 in game one. All right, I'll stop with the bracket up here, too. So in the bracket, um, the Cubs beat the Braves. So the Cubs are kind of really having a great year. And then um, the Twins beat the Blue Jays, and the Twins beat the Cubs the World Series. So we had the same champion. Um, in our league, we had kind of in real life five hit games. Puck had a five hit, had a six hit game. Um, no great pitching feats there. Uh, leaders in the playoffs. Puckett, who won the MVP of American League, was big in the playoffs as well. Um, Where's the home runs? Ryan Gant with four home runs there. Uh, so the Cubs are kind of a, a miracle team a little bit. Team that was under 500 in real life, got to the World Series, and didn't quite get it done. Um, as you kind of see through it here. Um, in the playoffs, how that all went.
in the World Series. That's game one. 14 inning win with the Twins in game one. That was a really good game. The Twins had 18 hits. Couldn't get, couldn't really hit guys in base. They go up 2 over here with an 8 to 3 lead. Brian Harper with two home runs. They win again in 12 innings again. So a lot of close games. So the series is 4 to 1 series, but it was kind of a tighter game than that. Um, and so far, Jack Morris goes 3 and 0 in the uh, playoffs. Aguilar with four saves in the playoffs. So uh, that's kind of it. So that's kind of the 91 season review in there. Um, kind of what happened. A lot of fun. It was a fun season to play, even though my Red Sox didn't quite get it done. Um, it was cool kind of to, to, to play along. And, you know, I was 16 years old, 91. Um, so it's right in my wheelhouse in terms of I was watching baseball every night. Uh, and those Red Sox teams, that Red Sox team, I remember well, those players, you know, Jack Clark, the whole deal. And so, um, you know, I'll show the Red Sox real quick to, to you in that 91 uh, kind of thing here. Let me go ahead and do the Red Sox team summary. This is a cool thing here, too. This is the Red Sox team summary for the year. Uh, I mean, their earned run average was 11th. It was actually pretty good most of the year. It kind of fell apart late. Uh, on base was third. Batting average was third. The guy with a bad year is Wade Boggs. Wade Boggs at 290, and I bring it up because in Glenn Victor's uh, replay, I think Boggs hit like 340, I think. He hit 330 in real life, I think, that year. Yeah, he hit 332 in real life. Um, hit 290. So he had a down year, and that really kind of hurt the offense, too. Um, Clemens got 21 wins. When she won the signing award, um, an ERA of 2.84, a innings pitch, she was a horse, um, and so forth. Uh, Jack Clark, you see what he did, and our replay, 257 um, with 25 homers, so a little less power, a little better batting average. He was really streaky. He was real, he was streaky in real life too. So it was kind of a strange Red Sox 91 team, you know. Um, we kind of hung in there for a little bit. I thought I'd make a little miracle run. Did not. It was fun to play. So, anyway, um, check out um, on that next day. I'm going to do a video later on kind of about my favorite features of this PC replay baseball game. And it kind of ties into uh, some of the things I talked about earlier. Uh, so, make sure you check out and watch for that for sure. Well, thanks for watching, guys. Once again, have a great night.